The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Chapter One. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, "Just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had." He didn't say any more, but we've always been unusually communicative, in a reserved way. And I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve. All judgment, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me, and also made me the victim of not a few veteran bores. The abnormal mind is quick to detect and attach itself to this quality when it appears in a normal person, and so it came about that in college, I was unjustly accused of being a politician. Because I was privy to the secret griefs of Wilde, a known man. Most of the confidences were unsought. Frequently, I have feigned sleep, preoccupation, or a hostile reverie, when I realized by some unmistakable sign that an intimate revelation was quivering on the horizon. For the intimate revelations of young men, or at least the terms in which they express them, are usually plagiaristic and mirrored by obvious suppressions. Reserving judgment is a matter of infinite hope. I am still a little afraid of missing something if I forget that, as my father snobbishly suggested. And I, snobbishly repeat, a sense of the fundamental decencies is parcelled out, unequally, at birth. And, after boasting this way of my tolerance, I come to the admission that it has a limit. Conduct may be founded on the hard rock, or the wet marshes. But after a certain point, I don't care what is founded on. When I came back from the east last autumn, I felt that I wanted the world to be in uniform, and at a sort of moral attention forever. I wanted to no more righteous excursions with privileged glimpses into the human heart. Only Gatsby, the man who gives his name to this book, was exempt from my reaction. Gatsby, who represented everything for which I have an unaffected scorn. If personality is an unbroken series of successful gestures, then there was something gorgeous about him, some heightened sensitivity to the promise of life. As if he were related to one of those intricate machines that register earthquakes, ten thousand miles away. This responsiveness had nothing to do with that flabby impressionability, which is dignified under the name of the creative temperament. It was an extraordinary gift for hope, a romantic readiness. Such as I have never found in any other person, and which is not likely I shall ever find again. No, Gatsby turned out all right at the end. It is what preyed on Gatsby, what flower dust floated in the wake of his dreams, that temporarily closed all my interest in the abortive sorrows. And short-winded elations of men.